just finished up our walkthrough. We're going to check out the exterior of the house now. We already showed you the entry over here. And then this is the back. We got the uh, kitchen and bathroom space back here. So you can see there's a propane tank here. The only thing that's servicing is the range. We're going to be switching to an electric range. So we're going to be getting rid of this here. Then over here, you can see in this little shed here, we have our kerosene water heater. So this is this is pretty common. You know, many houses they'll have um, they'll have electric, or they will have these kerosene heaters. Um, these work well, but we may we may be switching over to electric. But uh, this will get us by for now. So on the other side of the house, on the entry and on the back here, we've got rain gutters. I'm not sure why, but we don't have any on this side here. So we do have um, persistent rainfall coming off the roof here, and that has resulted in moisture. We got moss here. Doesn't really present any big problems other than some erosion. So you can see on the ground here, that's all the water coming off from the roof creating those divots in the ground um, but the moss is pretty cool looks like a little forest down there doesn't it so on this house um, we've got the raised floor on the sides here and then this is all open and they did um, get this cover this this mesh fabric on here to keep keep animals out from underneath but you know, obviously that's a temporary solution. So one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, decide on what type of um, material we want to use here. It's probably going to be a wood lattice that um, has a you know small enough openings that animals won't be able to get through it. And then at the same time, that's going to allow us to maintain some ventilation. And over here we have these little pop-outs here. And these are on the... Um, two sides of the house and these are going to come off so on the inside there's there's wooden screens and just major drafts come through there so I think the reasoning behind these is that you could open those wooden screens on the inside let air come in without get, letting that sun come in and things getting too hot so we've got one of those here and then this is that other shed that we looked at and that was next to one of the rooms there that's pretty dark um, this may become a sunroom for drying clothes, or this may be storage area. We're not really sure. We may want to put a door here, so we're going to try to figure that out. Let's go around to this other side of the house. Um, not sure what this is. This is this is a little shed. There's nothing in it, so I don't know. We may demo it, but that's uh, it's not a pressing issue right there. And again, at the bottom of the house, we're going to get lattice in there to get everything protected and what's interesting about this house they they did used to have something here you can see the um, joinery here that was allowing some kind of lattice work to be in here and you'll also notice all these posts are sitting on granite boulders um, below the dirt there's additional boulders that are typically laid perpendicular and they're supporting this one here. I did crawl around underneath all the house. Everything looks really good and I didn't see any rot at all. And we got another one of these pop outs here. Uh, we're going to take that off. That's going to get a architectural detail um, to make things look freshened up there and then get rid of that draft. Again on this side of the house no gutters so we're going to take care of that. Another fortunate aspect of this house is that the previous owner put a new roof on. So all of the horizontally laid boards, those are all new. And all the waterproofing underlayment is new. So we're, we're looking good there. This is another nice detail here, how all these the beams and posts come together with the traditional Japanese joinery. All of this siding is in pretty good shape. We're, we may replace some of it. All the stains faded. What we're probably going to do here is get a solid body stain. Okay, we're back over here going over some of the exterior tasks that we're going to do on this uh, crawl space area under the house. 
we were talking about before getting all this protected we want to keep all these um cats and raccoons out so all the spacing between the posts is just under two meters which is great we decided that we are going to use um 12 millimeter by 90 millimeter wide by two meter long japanese cedar that's uh, known as sugi so we'll probably get over to nishimuta to pick that up tomorrow morning it's a lot of talk so far about getting all this stuff going but we will do it we're here at nishimuta checking out the stains for the wood at the crawl space this is all oil based we don't want that um it's going to take a long time to dry i think for our purposes this water-based stain is good and we're going to go with this dark color here which is not quite black but it's pretty dark brown so we'll go ahead and start with the 2.5 liter can which will get us going and get some some insect protection too so this is what we need all right let's pick some rollers and brushes too i think that these kits are pretty good we'll grab a couple of these that's the roller the roller cover and the tray and a couple of these brushes as well so we'll be all set and Maybe we'll grab a couple of these pans here too. Those will probably come in handy. You gonna do some plastering? Okay, we're leaving the local Nishimuta in Kinko Town. Great store. It's not as big as the one in Konoya, but it's a great store. So we got all of our wood here. This is all uh, rough sound sugi, Japanese cedar. Got all our stand supplies, and then we'll uh, process our beach cleanup debris later. So we're all set to go. Let's go back to the house. We got all the netting out on this side. Let's go ahead and get started getting those horizontal boards in. We got most of our standing done the other day. You may recall we were getting all these ready. These all came out well. Nice even application of stain. These are the horizontal uh, boards. And we're going to go ahead and build the frames out of these ones here. And these are going to enclose the open spaces between the vertical support posts for the under roof house crawl space. Again, we want to keep those animals out. We got all our tools set here, so we're going to go ahead and get some measurements and get started installing these. Great selection of tools at Nishimuta. I'm definitely needing to pick up a few things. All my tools are in um, the States, so great resource here.
All right, there it is. We got the last side of the house done with all of the uh, horizontal boards that are going to keep all those animals out. Put an access gate right there. Hey, greetings from under this old house. I was working on the horizontal boards to enclose the crawl space under the house and I started to notice that all these wood panels you see behind me were all loose. So this is the backside of the shoe storage under those hardwood slabs at the two entry points. They were held in place when the house was built 96 years ago with nails. Um, at that time they weren't galvanized nails, they were just steel nails. So. They've rusted out and a lot of these are loose and a lot of them have fallen down. So let's go ahead and um, patch these all up. While we're down here under the house, we might as well take a look at some of the framing. So this is pretty cool. This massive timber, uh, it's a mortise and tenon joint. So the end of this timber goes through the post and you can see those wooden pegs that run through the post securing the uh, mortise and tendon joint of the beam to the post. I'm almost done patching up the back sides of these shoe bins and we're on the other end of the house. More of these massive timbers here and Indeed, as I thought in that um, one room next to the kitchen, I saw the, the um, exposed timbers and they looked like they had been stained with soot or smoke. And then sure enough, underneath that, this is the old stonework for that fireplace, the sunken hearth there. We already did our walkthrough outside of the house and got a good look at everything there. Let's go ahead and take a look up in the attic now. Uh, it's not really attic, it's really just the um, roof crawl space. So let's take a look at the roof framing and talk about a few things that we want to do up here. Up in the attic space, we've got old knob and tube wiring. We're going to pull all of that out. We're going to get a new service panel with a little bit more capability for additional breakers and then to run uh, switches and outlets throughout the house we're going to come up from the service panel in the kitchen and run galvanized steel conduit throughout the attic spaces and then anywhere we need outlets or switches we're going to drop those down through the walls so that's the best solution in this case because we don't really have any interior walls so if we run that conduit in a neat way through the attic space drop it down to the rooms and then we get the boxes for the outlets and switches those are all going to be surface mounted below that'll look pretty cool all this roof framing is pretty impressive too you can see you've got all these big timbers and i think i mentioned it before but when they put the new roof on we've got all these new horizontal boards which is cool because you get a nice contrast between the new and the old I'll try to show you this framing as best as I can these are the beams spanning the rooms and you can see some of these timbers that are going um, from one side of the wall to the other and they're all supported by these other cross beams here so those sticks there are supporting the drop ceiling and you've got the same thing over here so uh, this all, all this framing is so cool we're thinking in a couple of these rooms we want to remove these ceilings get these beams all cleaned up get everything washed and oiled and just have this beautiful open space 
looking up into the attic so we can enjoy all the nice woodwork here. We all know that heat rises, but the truth is, in this house, it's going to be drafty anyway. So all these eaves are open to the outside. If I move the light, you can see the light coming through there. These boards that are um, on the edge of these rooms, big gaps everywhere. So on the other side of the house, you can see those eaves are open too. So really, no matter what you do, it's going to be drafty. So if the hot air rises up from these rooms when it's cold, it's not that big a deal. It's not a huge space, and I think overall it will um, may even help circulate that warmth around the house a little bit. What do you guys think? Those are our ideas to open up this room. It's going to be nice, I think, once we get everything going. So we're uh, starting to get some work done and the ideas continue to flow every day, but things are moving along. So we're going to get things cleaned up for today. I'll probably go out for a bike ride along the coast tomorrow, get a little exercise in, and then get going again over here. Hey, good morning. I'm riding through the This here is a small market, and you can see they are sorting some of the day's catch over here. So you're going to be able to buy that here also. Wow, I was last here about three and a half months ago, and this wasn't here. So it looks like they started construction on that, which is probably going to be something related to the fishing industry here. And right up here is a very well-known restaurant. Um, the menu never changes. They have the same thing every day. It's Monday, so they're closed today, but this is quite famous. People come here from all over the place to eat here. We've been here many times, and it's super good. Now, I want to take a look at this house down the street. They were building this last time I was here, and what's really cool about it is the charred wood siding. You can see it's kind of a modern design, but what's really cool is this siding. So it's all been evenly charred before installation and it looks really cool. The contrast with all the new wood is pretty striking. So we just left for Rue and we're riding down Highway 269. I wanted to show you the Kanpachi farms. Kanpachi is a prized local fish and throughout Sakurajima Bay there's lots of farms. So these guys are out there doing their daily work. Sakurajima Bay is amazing today. Here we are in December and it feels like a summer day. And this is the Arahira Shrine. I really never get tired of this. Here we are 
at the entrance to the town of Takasu. There's a small inlet for the little harbor slash river here. Looks like we're on low tide right now. The town's over here and just on the other side of those buildings there's um, Takasu Beach and Hamada Beach in the bay there. Alright, that was good. A lot of talk, a lot of talk, a lot of talk. <laughs>